not know is that uh, Hassan was just featured on the uh, CirrusNet blog. He has a great story on there. Hassan Hodges is feeling the referral love in CirrusNet. And the reason that I chose that as the title is because Hassan is motivated to take his pictures based on where his feelings guide him, which I think is just very, very cool. So in addition to his spotlight today, I think you'll learn a lot more about Hassan and can share this post with other people as well too. So let's give Hassan Hodges a, uh, a super warm welcome into the spotlight. Everybody's mic is unmuted so he can hear us press our hands together. Welcome Hassan. Thank you. I'm pushing buttons to share my screen. And are you guys, I'm not seeing my slides yet. As it's loaded, so it's just working. There you go. All right, so you're seeing me and you're seeing my slides. All right, so I am Hassan, start my timer too. I am Hassan Hodges and my company is HH Photographics. So one of the questions that I often get, and is me, um, one of the questions that I often get is the name Hassan. Um, so the origin of that is that my parents were in the Peace Corps when I was born and they were living overseas. So they gave me a popular local name and I spent the first years of my life living in a small village in Africa. And then I moved to New Jersey and became a lot less interesting. Um, eventually went to Rutgers and I studied geography, but I spent all of my time at the college newspaper and that was the first place that I got a taste of photography. Um, after that, I went into a career in journalism and maps were my niche. Um, so I'd make a lot of maps covering disasters and other data-driven things, but always focusing on telling a story and how to make things relevant and meaningful to people even when they may or may not be meaningful. Um, and I thought about becoming a photographer because it was a, an interest of mine. So I'm like, okay, maybe I should, should go for this. But in 2003, I really didn't have the technical skills that I needed to be able to pull it off. Um, so I started working on those. And one of my interests at that time was landscape photography. So I did a fair bit of that. Then I had a daughter and took a lot of pictures of her and just kept kind of working on those skills um, and just doing this as a, a fun kind of thing that I was doing. The question was always there, do I become a photographer? And, and I had another moment in 2008 when I, I looked at that, I'm like, all right, I've got these skills now. I can do something with this. I'm, I'm ready to, to do something. But then I realized, mm, no, that's that ball that you see coming in, that's a referral and me not catching it. Um, so I just did not have that concept of how business is really done by working with other people and building relationships and stuff that happens over time, not just a one thing. So went in a different direction um, and wound up moving to Ann Arbor to build AnnArbor.com. I had gotten into technology and design and development at that point and also learned a whole lot about um, local businesses and how to be a business. So that was kind of a, a point of you know, what brought me to Ann Arbor. And I kept working on my hobby and I kept sticking with photography. My daughter had gotten a bit older at this point and we were um, doing a lot of pictures of her doing ballet. So whenever we'd go on a trip somewhere, we would make sure to go to an interesting place and get some, some pictures and put a lot of effort into these. Um, this one was one that had a tremendous amount of effort into it. You'll notice the size of the moon there. To get the moon that large, I was actually a quarter mile away from her with a 600 millimeter lens that had a 2X multiplier on that that's geeking out to say it was really big. And that let me make the moon really big, but I had to be really far away. So I art directed this via walkie talkie and we had been planning it for a month to figure out where's the moon gonna be and then where can we find a location that fits where the moon is and kind of work backwards to get to that point. Um, and that was a really fun photo project. Um, and then, after that, there was a thing that happened. Um, so it was kind of a, it was a big deal. Um, took us about six months to get through, but it was a, a medical crisis for my daughter. And it was big, it was heavy, it was bad. Um, and I'm not gonna get into a lot of details here, but if anybody wants to talk about chronic pain conditions in kids, I'm happy to have that conversation. Um, Good news is things got a lot better. We eventually wound up moving to Cleveland for a month and um, she learned to walk again, which was awesome. And kept things kept getting better and she's doing wonderfully now.
but this whole thing had kind of a big impact on everybody that was involved. Um, so there were plenty of dark days for, for myself and kind of came out on the other side of this thing and look back and I'm like, wait, I'm not the same person that I was on the before moment of this. I'm, I'm different now and I've got a very different relationship with the present moment, with people, with feelings and exploration and pacing and all sorts of things. So when I asked the question again in 2019, should I become a photographer? You know, I've asked this question a few times, but this time, this time, yeah, it's happening. Um, so I decided to, to go for it and I'm become a photographer. So founded HH Photographics in October of 2019. Um, since it's still a fairly new business, I'm still trying to figure out my niche. So I am available everywhere. Um, one of the things I've learned in trying to make things small is that I actually have one speed, which is just to go all in on everything. And that's kind of what I do with photography. So um, yeah, that's who I am. And the big thing that I do is capture feelings. Um, it's not something I was really able to do before I had these life events going on, but it's something that I've got a, a very different relationship with now. And that's what I try to do. Um, so one of the niches that I do shoot are families. I love working with kids and parents and just seeing the interactions between them and the chaos. Um, it's always fun, um, even if it's, if it's rough, because I like to capture authentic moments and things that are actually happening um, rather than things that are, are perfect. Um, this is Leah's family. She's in our group. It was a wonderful shoot that we had. Um, I also do senior portraits and have a lot of lighting tricks that I can use to really capture the moment and enhance the moment, but start with something that is authentic. Um, and I am for authentic experiences and not perfection. So right now I'm wearing jammies and flip flops and yeah, I have a coat on. So it looks really nice. It's just kind of like the photos. I can make this all look really nice from one angle, but if you look at it from all sides, it may not be that because this is, you know, about making one angle that works. And that's what I've figured out a lot of ways to do is to help you get that. And it's not, it's not perfect, perfect, but it's authentic and it's real. And sometimes you'll see the things that are behind the scenes and, they all kind of pop in there. Um, some other, other types of photography I'll do, personal branding. I mentioned this before, I do lots of stuff with lights. So I've got full studio setups. I've got a light over here um, and I bring those out and I will you know, use that to let us create an image that really tells your story. Uh, a couple more personal branding ones. This was a really fun shoot. I overpowered the sun here to help this image just pop out uh, even though he was in the shadows. Um, I do amazing headshots, and you'll see from these that there's kind of a different range to them, different looks that I'll do, try to get to know the person, and then craft the image around that and what they're trying to achieve, because no image should just be a cookie cutter. Um, so we want to be creative more so than we want to be predictable and really get to something that, you know, that fits with what you need. Um, I also do business images. So this was uh, on the right, we've got a bar there, but you know, as I said earlier about you know, helping to tell your story, how images are more important than ever. These are things that I can help you create. Um, so events and moments or weddings and things. So all stuff that is coming from Earth that was and things that are very different now. Um, also do some stuff with, uh, with performing arts and making wonderful images there, um, but we're kind of on this intermission moment where things have been really slowed down and I'm not doing the, you know, the normal photography stuff that I do. But there are a couple of other things that I'm doing. So um, there's a project that I just started last week that I'm super excited about because um, it seems like everybody is in this moment where there was life that existed before, there's life that exists now, and there's life that is going to come after this moment. And I'm trying to capture that, particularly among business owners. Um, so these were the first three shoots that I, I did of finding people who were, you know, who own and operate businesses and I've posted their, you know, their stories on my social media and I'm trying to build a huge collection of these and I want more people for it. Um, so I've actually got a sign up link on my website. Hopefully Steve can put this in the meeting notes, um, but I've got a link you can go there and you can sign up, put your answer the questions and then from that, um, I will schedule the shoot with you and we'll get this one portrait done outside. Um, and I've also started doing socially distanced shoots. 
So we can do outdoor shoots. We can do it at your, uh, at your doorstep. Um, we can do it out in some streets. We can go out to some nature areas. And that's kind of dependent on a couple of conditions, but I've just started uh, getting these back into the mix. And those are um, $200 a session. And this is kind of the end of it. And things that I want to make sure that you remember, I capture feelings. I have fun, which means you have fun. It actually shows up in the pictures. So that's why I try to make things so much fun so the pictures look better. Um, I'm very creative. I don't really stop with things and I'm flexible. So I'm always trying to adjust where I'm going to what your needs are and not bring in my preconceived notions. I like to make plans and do a lot of detailed planning and then throw it all out the window. And thank you very much. I am Hassan Hodges, HH Photographics. You can follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on Facebook. And there is the link to my website as well. That's it. I've got 12 seconds left. Good job. Very good. Good job, Hassan. Thanks. Steve was muted there. Yeah, I saw that. Um, so, and I, I thought I unmuted everybody. So, um, you know, this is the end of the meeting. So we do have an opportunity to um, uh, ask Hassan questions to comment on his presentation. So if anybody's got anything, just go right ahead. I'll just say, uh, Hassan, great job, great images. As a photographer myself, I know there's a lot of behind the scenes magic that happens, including humor. So glad to hear that you're doing that. And yeah, I mean, people are, are some of the hardest people, people are some of the hardest subjects to, to capture. And so you've done a, a great job at that. So good job, man. Thank you. Yeah, well done, Hassan. Good eye, good creativity. <coughs> job. Yeah. Yeah, just a shout out for Hassan. I've mentioned it before, but he took our office shots and our headshots. And I hate having my picture taken, especially candid shots in an office. I feel like they're so awkward and so weird, but he made it really fun and uh, it was very painless. So, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, anyone else? Any questions at all? Hassan, I've got a question for you. You mentioned uh, something about the social distancing you know, shoot like $200 or whatever. And that's one thing I've been try wondering about a little bit is, you know, how, how does your pricing, you know, in your own research of the marketplace and whatnot, how does your pricing compare to maybe somebody who's been making this a full-fledged business for the last 10 years or so? Um, it's, it's tough to say because prices vary so wildly. Um, some photographers base things off of hourly rates. Some treat them more like art efforts and I fall more on the the artist side so a lot of flat prices for things normally my rates are a little bit higher for shoots but those are more involved and um, you know there are a couple things that are different with the distance shoots the uh, do them all with the long lens forgot to mention this during the presentation but there's a little setting on here that I can limits me to only being able to shoot things that are three meters away so that means that I will not be close enough to you for anything weird to happen um, so it, it imposes the, the social distancing mechanically. I have another question, Hassan. Your, your, your professional, your business shoot that you're doing right now in the black and white, what, is there a premise around that or is there sort of like a idea trying behind to, it? Metric? To, yeah, just trying to capture the moment and tell so many different stories and give people more ways to, to be out there. Um, things that I said this earlier about how you know messages are are not really about closing the sale right now, and right now I want to you know help help these businesses put their messages out there um, in the hopes that they will still be around and can be my clients in the future. But for now, I really want to tell these stories, and there's so many stories out there, and like there's some people that are doing well because of these situations, and there are a lot of people that are not, and I want to tell like that whole range of things and you know, inspired by a lot of the humans of New York um, type posts, but really sharing that there are so many different voices out there.